Hey gang, John Baccarella here with your March 7th Lake St. Clair fishing report. And uh, man, we still got ice. It's crazy. I can't remember the last time we had this much ice this late in the season. I mean, not that you can walk on it, but even the spillway is froze right now, which is kind of nuts. I mean, it, normally it's wide open and guys are fishing for walleye. So, um, but so we do have ice all over the lake. I was just down there a little, uh, about an hour ago and looked and it looked like there was a freighter stuck out in the middle and there was a Coast Guard cutter out in front trying to break it for him to, to get him through, but the freighter did not look like he was moving. I stayed and watched for a while. But so we have got a ton of ice out there, guys. And because we have a ton of ice, it has kept the fishing relatively slow for this time of the year. Now that's not to say that guys aren't catching a lot of fish. There are some really nice catches of perch coming, but there's an equal number of guys out there that are struggling or just catching dinks. Now I'm gonna sound like a broken record when I say this, but they are still catching fish shallow. How shallow? As shallow as two feet is some of the reports I've got from guys. Mostly four foot when the guys are fishing shallow, but I did talk to somebody that got them really good in two feet of water just a couple of days ago. So they're still fishing shallow. There are still fish out deep. There's fish out by those jams in 10, 11, up to 12 feet. Although I'm gonna, the next part of this report is probably gonna be more of an ice fishing report because I'm gonna talk about a little bit about what we can expect to happen here. So right now we got stable weather out there. We're not even above freezing. We haven't been for several days. We've been making ice like crazy every night with single digits and we got a warm front coming. Okay, we got a very serious warm front coming this weekend and that's gonna mean another crazy blow day. So the pick day fishing is probably gonna be tomorrow. We should have some relatively calm conditions Friday. And then Saturday, the winds are gonna to start to pick up out of the Southwest. Still not gonna be a horrible day for fishing. Saturday night, we got rains coming in and we're supposed to, there's all different reports on how much rain we're gonna get, but we're gonna get some rain Saturday night. Then Sunday, she is gonna blow like a banshee again. They're forecasting 50 mile an hour winds again. Now, I kind of doubt we're gonna completely dodge this bullet, although the winds are supposed to be southwest and they're gonna blow hard up into the point at Metro. They're gonna blow hard up into the bay at Anchor Bay. So I'm guessing we're really not gonna lose anything other than the edges are gonna get soft and we're gonna probably lose some thickness from the warm, um, warm winds. So we're gonna lose some thickness, but we do have a lot of thickness to give up out there. So next week, guys, you know, it's gonna probably really be getting close to the last ice on the main lake. And then canals, who knows how long those are gonna last. It's gonna depend on how cold our nights are and how much sun we get and all that kind of good stuff. So I'm gonna give you a couple of tips here right now to help you improve your catches when you're out there this weekend. Now, first, they are still getting fish on bead spoons. Bead spoons have been going all year. Um, the chartreuse bead spoons, I think, have been doing better than red for most of the season. Um, but a lot of you guys go out and you kind of do the one trick pony thing, right? Where you fish the bead spoons and that's all you fish on the bead spoons. You get a few fish going and then they stop on you. So I'm gonna give you kind of my trick for fishing bead spoons and it's kind of a, a three rod setup. So the first rod that I'm gonna put down is gonna have a bigger bead spoon on. So like a bigger Ken's or a slab grabber, something in like the inch and a half to two inch profile that's got some mass to it. Um, you could also substitute like a rip and wrap or uh, even a, oh, like a buckshot spoon or something. The idea is with that first bait is to get the really aggressive fish first or to bring fish that are close to you in underneath the hole. You get as many aggressive fish as you can either on that bead spoon or on that rip and wrap or whatever you got down there, that aggressive bait. And then when they stop, you immediately grab your second rod that's gonna have a smaller presentation. A lot of times I'll use a smaller bead spoon, like a small little nickel um, mark spoon, like one of those little willows, or the same thing with one of the Ken spoons, but a smaller size, size number one or size number two. You're gonna downsize a little bit. And then when those fish, if they won't hit that, you're gonna know right away. They're either gonna hit it right away when you drop it down, or you're gonna get a couple of fish on it and they're gonna go, they're gonna go quiet again. As Soon as they go quiet, I'm talking 10 seconds. If you don't get another fish right away, you drop your third rod down, which is gonna be like a four millimeter tungsten or one of your other favorite lead baits loaded up with spikes or a wax worm, some kind of a live bait. And you put that down there. Now, if you don't get a fish right away on that, your fish are gone. But if you do get a couple of fish on it, sometimes you can work the school back up. And then you start the whole process over again. Once that bite gets really aggressive on that live bait, then you try dropping that bead spoon back down to them again. 
And you'll be amazed. Sometimes you can keep this cycle going all day. Sometimes it ends after the first cycle, the second cycle. But either way, the point is you got bonus fish out of it. You held that school down there a lot longer than you were doing the one trick pony thing, just catching them all on the bead spoon. So I guess that's one of my, one of my tips. One of the other tips I'm gonna give you too, especially now that we got warm weather coming, for you guys that like to get up later and go out, you're not the first guys in here in the morning, you're the guys coming out nine, 10 o'clock, maybe you're doing the afternoon bite, okay? Once we get to these warmer temps next week and it looks like we're gonna be above freezing most of the time next week during the day, you can go out there and you can fish all of these empty holes that the guys in the morning cut. And actually after the, a few days into next week, you're gonna have open holes potentially out there from days worth of fishing that you're gonna be able to go out and I call it like vulture picking because you, you don't have to do any work at all. You can go out with an auger, without an auger, without a spud, you won't need a scooper. But what you do wanna have with you is a long rod. This is when the long rods really come in handy. So you quietly sneak up on all those holes out there and you fish them before you get to them. So this is, I know it's gonna to be tough because it's gonna be slippery out there without, without any snow on the ice. We're gonna lose all that snow. It's gonna be probably wet and slippery, but this is not where you wanna wear your creepers. This is where you wanna keep your creepers in your bucket and you wanna walk real quietly. You don't wanna walk right up to those holes. You use a long rod, which is generally like a four foot ice rod and we sell them in here, but there's all different versions of it. You could even use a small ultralight open water rod put a spring bobber on the end of it, sneak up on that hole, get several feet away, reach out and, and touch somebody, touch those fish. But you're just gonna drop it down into those holes from long distance. When I mean long distance, like six, seven feet away from that hole, when you reach out with that four foot rod, you will be amazed how many fish you catch right underneath the ice because you haven't walked up to that hole, you haven't spooked them. So I guess that's another tip for, for the coming uh, for next week and then going into the late ice season using those long rods moving real quiet those fish are going to be in really shallow um, the water is going to get oxygenated you're going to have you're going to have runoff flowing in um, also with that runoff after Saturday night going into Sunday really start to be careful around those boat launches because they will probably wash out that one at Selfridge is notorious if we get heavy rain um, that water coming in out of that ditch or creek or whatever you want to call it along M59 there is probably going to wash that out pretty quick down there. Same thing at Crocker Road with that water flowing in off of that boat ramp once it gets warm. So, um, you know, the fat lady is really starting to sing now, guys, even though I know we got the thickest ice of the year right now. The sun is very strong. It's going to start eating away on those edges and this rain and this wind this weekend is gonna start that process. For you walleye guys, I know this is, is happening none too soon because you know there's a lot of eyes already in the Detroit River with your name on them, um, but we got a lot of ice that we're gonna to have to lose out here first before it's gonna be safe for that. So uh, that's the fishing report for this week. Um, we'll try to do another one next week. We'll give you an ice report after, uh, after Sunday, after the big, big blow, and we'll see what we got left out there. Take care, guys.